I'm the chair of the board of directors, and um, uh, we have other members of the board here. Um, the members of the board, can you guys uh, please uh, raise your hand and so people can see who you are? John? They're serving beer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, they're serving beer, serving uh, bratwurst, working the front door, they're all over. Uh, and also we have lots of staff members, and uh, uh, staff members, can you raise your hands? All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So if you, look, if you have questions, you can look for people with a green lanyard, and uh, and hopefully they'll be able to answer your question or, or point you towards someone who can. And we do have our areas open. The, the uh, production area and the retail area are, are open for uh, for people to look around, and we do have people in there that can answer uh, questions um, about those areas. So uh, please feel free to wander around and and take a tour on your own and, and uh, just see what it is that we do here. Um, I, I hope most of you saw when you came in that the bathrooms are right up here in the uh, in between the front door and uh, uh, this by this hallway over here. But um, anyway, I want to thank you all for being here. I want to also thank you all because you've uh, helped us over the last 10 years. So, uh, you know, this has uh, allowed us to become who we are. So um, I also wanted to tell you a quick story, and then I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Charles Brennick, which, uh, whom, whom most of you know already, but uh, uh, I wanted to tell you about an experience I had about 10 years ago, and this is actually how I met Charles. Uh, uh, I went uh, to Guatemala with my family, and we, instead of just taking a normal vacation, we decided we were going to do a, uh, uh, something where we could help people, and this was especially our teenage kids, we felt like this would be useful for them, so we went to Guatemala with a, with a friend of ours uh, that was a college professor taking a group of students down there and they did a certain amount of uh, service learning and uh, there were, we toured a lot of schools. We saw these schools were, you know, they had very little. A lot of times, some, one of them I remember didn't even have desks and chairs, they just had little benches that went around the wall and uh, we, we helped them fund uh, doing uh, chairs and desks and so forth um, out of that trip. But um, uh, I went to one school, they asked me to stop in where uh, well, actually, on the way down, we've been asked to, to bring a couple of computers, and so we took desktop computers, and I took a monitor, and my son took a, uh, uh, the CPU, and somebody else brought the keyboard, and, and we checked them in our baggage when we went down there, and, and you know, it was a terrible way to do things, and we thought, you know, there's got to be a better way than that. But when we got down there, the, the school, one of the schools I went to uh, was a high school that had about 80 students that were sharing five PCs in the little lab that they'd set up. And uh, four of them weren't working when I got there. But they were uh, uh, all things I could fix with my Swiss Army knife for the most part. They were just like bent pins or little tiny things that just needed to be tweaked to be able to make them work. Uh, there was one I couldn't get, to, uh, get fixed that just needed a new keyboard, and we sent that um, when we got back. But, um, you know, they had a lot of problems with not knowing how to maintain their equipment and uh, really weren't sure how to train people and there wasn't the internet connection at that time and so forth. But I got back up here and I looked and I found an organization that was uh, sending large amounts of computers. They were sending uh, uh, container loads. And it wasn't interconnection at that time. It was another one that was on the, uh, the East Coast. And they said, well, there's been some other interest from some other people in Seattle and so we'll set up an event. So they set up this event in a... In brought all their e-waste and everything, and, and uh, we did some kind of rudimentary testing, and then we packed it all in and shipped it off, and, and uh, actually, I think Charles was uh, left to try to figure out how to how to uh, get rid of all the stuff that was left over, in fact, and uh, uh, so that's where I, I actually met Charles, but, you know, when we did all of that, it was a good thing because we shipped more computers, but at the same time, there were a lot of problems. The, the drives weren't erased. Uh, beforehand, the, the stuff wasn't thoroughly checked, and, and you know there was a problem with the amount of stuff that was not working when it got down there. And you know one of the things that Charles shares with me is that we both thought there's got to be a better way. And you know Charles uh, took it upon himself. He said, "We're going to do this through interconnection. We're going to do it right." And you know he uh, uh, he really uh, uh, did make sure that there was a regular supply of, uh, of materials. Uh, working with uh, uh, Craig and uh, uh, with Total Reclaim, and uh, also uh, he made sure that everything was tested, that uh, all the hard drives were wiped, and set up a procedure for all of the all of these things to make sure that uh, that everything was done. And um, you know he kept looking for a better way. 
And so, you know, he's uh, uh, continued with the program, and uh, I'm sure he'll tell you uh, uh, more about it. But uh, really, after 10 years, uh, he's still looking for a better way. We've shipped 25,000 computers, changed the lives of uh, many, many more people than that. And uh, in large part, thanks to, uh, to all of you that are here tonight. So, again, thank you very much. But uh, without further ado, let me introduce the guy that's always looking for a better way to do this, Charles Bennett.